G'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to round two. This is the first night round of Life and Death. We're playing my custom Mage Knights to just see how they function. And I'm a, I'm a little regretful that I chose Life and Death. Life and Death is a Shades of Tesla scenario, and I do really like the Shades of Tesla expansion, but I was thinking after while I was doing the editing that uh, it's a lot harder to find XP in uh, the Shades of Tesla expansion, which makes leveling up harder, which makes seeing more of the skills and stuff for the characters harder. So that's not good. Okay, so let's get into this. We're starting with the Dryad. The Dryad has, what's this? She's done a dungeon. And she's in a village. Let's see if there's anything to buy. She's got no slots to buy anything. Okay, so we've got, I think this is the place to go. We need four to get in there. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, we're ready to go. So, uh, let's first we'll do, uh, beginning of the turn, we'll do a mana search. Get rid of that gold mana. I think I'll just go four, like so. That takes us to here. And I think I'll also just dump out the heal and heal that as well. Okay, it's the end of his turn. Your blammo. Now it's the dummy player. Uh, boom, boom, boom. One extra card. It's now the necromancer. Now it's five to get into the forest now. So what have we got here? What are we on again? We are on a castle, I think. That's a castle, isn't it? No, it's a mage tower. Mage Tower 7. Let's abide by this guy. Oh, that's right. I used preparation to get threatened so I could do the Mage Tower this turn. So I'm just going to go 5, 6, 7. Grab this guy. We are at 0 rep, so that is fine. And we're back to the Dryad. So the Dryad is here. What we could do is, I think I'm gonna not use mana shirts. I wanna have one black available for spells because it is nighttime. Okay, we are on a maze. Do have Rush of Adrenaline. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go bam. I'm going to grab red. Oh, we've already got a red. Yeah, I'm going to grab red. And I'm going to discard this one. Okay, let's draw three cards. We get one white. Let's go quickly, baby. Draw back up to five. We've got a wound in hand. We've got our other. It's not a particularly good hand. We are going to go four. That takes us to here and doesn't explore. This one will flip over. Okay, nice. So we can kill this guy. We can definitely kill that guy pretty easily. There's a lot of stuff for him to do around here. Uh, I think I'll also discard the infamous reprisals, which is our influence card. And now it's the Dryad's turn again. I think...
Hmm. Do a move. Yeah, so he's going to roll the white and the black using mana search. Beautiful. We get a blue and a green. That couldn't be better for us. So we're going to go four, five, six, and that gets us into the deepest level of the maze. Now the mazes, we just draw a token and we can take one unit. But yunk. What you got for us? Okay, so we've got a Hydra. That's not very cool, but it's very easy for us to kill. And I'm not going to, I'm just going to go one, two, three wounds. And then I'm going to cast Rush of Adrenaline. We're going to pay with the red crystal we produced. After taking the first wound to your hand this turn, throw it away and draw a card. For each of the next three wounds, draw a card. So we get rid of that, draw a card, and then we draw another two cards. And now we just need to produce six damage, which we can do quite easily. Uh, now, how do I want to do this? I can go like this. Uh, where is it? Five, six, seven. So this produces a red token, so I can keep our crystal. So that's five damage. Six, seven damage. We only need six to kill. So that is a death. You blammo. And we get a artifact for level six. So first things first, we did get five rep. Takes us to 11. We also get an artifact. Book of Wisdom. And... Sapphire Ring. Hmm. I think Book of Wisdom. You can't really go wrong with that one, can you? The Book of Wisdom basically gives you free access to all the cards here. And that be that. Okay. It is now the dummy's turn. One, two, three. One, two. Two, four cards left. Poor old Necromancer. Let's get something done. What has he got? He's got create a basic mana token and a black mana token. So this is our version of the uh, of the attack. So what do you think is better here? What I think I'd do is I'll kill this guy, then kill this guy, then kill this guy. That's my plan. So this should, should be very easy to kill because we have a physical resistance golem, which means we can just let a three physical attack go, gets completely absorbed by the golem. He doesn't get wounded. So we only need to produce six damage now, which we should be able to do. So that's four, five, six damage. He is now killed. Blamo. This gives us two rep, one, two, and also gives us a elemental token. Try it again, drop the five cards. Throw away an action card from your hand. Gain an advanced action card from the advanced actions offered to your hand that is the same color as a thrown away card. Well, that's pretty cool. So what do we have here? We've got a white and a red, a blue and a green. So let's throw away this red. Get this one into our hand. Oh, wait, is that throw away, did it say? Oh, that says throw away. I thought it was discard for some reason. 
You know what? I'm just going to backtrack a little. I, I misread that card because I'm an idiot. Okay, so we're going to do that. Gain a blue crystal and take plus one fame. Oh, we're also going to mana search this gold mana. Okay, bam, bam, bam. There's only two turns left for everybody. Okay, so what have we got here? Does this give us move? No. Okay, so I'm going to go four move. That gets us into here. Stick that there. I'm pretty certain I'm going to kill him. This guy comes out. We can absorb the three attack on our golem. So that gets absorbed. So we only need to deal with the five attack, which is uh, three damage. And then we just need to do four attack back, which is trivial. So I'm going to use my skill here. Create a basic mana token and a black mana token. Flip that over. So I'll just create a white mana token. And I'll play this one sideways. That's four. It also creates a black mana token, but we don't need that. So I've created three, four attack, which is enough to kill him. That is that. I've actually taken two of these. I don't know why I have got these down. One, two. That means we now have plus two cards for our next draw. We're plus five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're negative two, one, two, because this is a hero, so we get an extra negative attack for it. Oh, and I forgot, uh, both these people are now got an extra shield. Ooh. Okay. Fortunately, we've got an absolute heap of... Things here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a rest. And this guy is going to declare the end of round. And now I'm going to draw up to seven. So we're going to go green. That's heal two. And I'm also going to go Crystallize and Mana Draw. Take the white and get a white crystal. And that's pretty much the end of my turn. Now coming over to green face. Can we do something cool with the last turn? Okay. Well, we can cast this awesome spell. Just roll the dice and we get, how much do we get? We get a gold and a green. So gold means we can take a gem of any color and a green. So we get a green and I'll get a white and then I've got one of everything. Now... What's the deal here? This guy's three damage, so we can just kill this guy, right? So I'm gonna go boom. That's block four, but it counts twice versus swiftness. So we block this guy, which is rare because he's got swiftness. And now we just need to do five damage, which shouldn't be a problem. So we'll just go like this.
four, five, and he's dead. Okay, sorry, there was a bit of an interruption there. Uh, where was I? Yeah, so I'd killed this guy pretty easily. Maybe I should kill this guy instead. I can produce four. Yeah, I think I'm going to actually, let's just jump into here. I'm going to do this instead. Flip it over. Okay, so this guy is attacking for five. We need to do six damage. That's four. Uh, we need two to move in. So I'll do a, use this to take two dice. So that's one, two. Okay, so that's four, five, six, seven. That's enough to kill him. And we can't block him this time. So he's attacking for five. We're defending at three. That's two wounds. He gets a token. That's plus three, one, two, three. Goes down one in rep and we have leveled up. So let's uh, grab this and grab this. Okay, so nine and 10. Nine says, gain three attack or two range when standing in a forest. If it is night, also gain two block. Reduce all values by one if standing in any other hex. If in a city or dungeon, this effect can yield only one attack. Or the 10 is, uh, oh, we're supposed to be using 11. Well, uh, let's just grab it. Just test it out. I very rarely test out the uh, cooperative skills because I don't play cooperative at all, really. So we'll grab that one and we'll grab a spell. Uh, I think I'll take ambush. And blamo, oops, <laughs> and blamo, the dummy is that's the end of the end of the turn. So I just quickly oh, that's really annoying. So now this one goes on red and white. Ugh, I should have taken that one just to fix the the deck and a blue. Oh, wait. Also, I'm just going to do this at the end of his turn. Flip to heal one. So that gets healed. Okay. Roll the dice. Make it daytime. Grab the dummy card, planning, that's my favorite card. Okay, so two of the dice are non-basic, so they get to re-roll. Wow, that's a very blue, <laughs> it's a very blue opening. And boom, new cards. Flip. My skills. Okay. So that's really bad. 
Okay, let's have a look at this cooperative skill. Right, so while I was doing this video, I kind of edited the cooperative skill because I found a little bit of a problem with the wording. And it was there was lots of pontificating and typing and yapping around. So I just cut that all out of the video. And instead, I'm just going to read you the finished skill as it is now. This skill is supposed to simulate the elusive trait that some enemies have, but for the Mage Knight. So what it does is... For a single calculation of incoming damage, double your armor value and gain two wounds instead of one for each wound added to your hand, and three wounds instead of one for each wound added to your discard pile. You cannot use this ability if you attack during the range phases of combat. To be knocked out requires one extra wound. At the end of your turn, throw away wounds from your hand equal to the amount of enemy tokens faced divided by two and rounded up. So what that's saying is that you basically double your armor value, which is very powerful, but you gain extra wounds. So if you take one wound, you actually take two wounds. But if you take poison damage, the poison damage, you get three wounds for every one. So instead of taking one poison damage, you take three poison damage. So it's quite, it's almost useless against people with poison attacks also because it's trying to simulate elusive if they if you attack during the range phase you come out of cover which means it goes away so you can't use it if you do it during the range phase and as an extra bonus it requires an extra wound to be knocked out so you're a bit stronger and then at the end of your turn you actually get to throw away wounds based on how many tokens you face so if you face one token you get one wound throw away if you get two tokens, one wound throw away. If you get three tokens, two wounds are thrown away, and so on. And then the, the cooperative part of this skill is, then place this skill in the source. While in the source, a friendly knight may return this skill to you face down to gain block equal to your reputation value. All values are considered positive, x equals zero. If still in the source at the start of your next turn, return the skill face down to your play area. So that is the cooperative skill as it stands now for the Dryad. Okay, so that is the end of that. I'm just going to save this and I'll see you guys next time.